I'm Don Newman. This is CBC Country Canada. Here's how this dick figured it played out. Tommy found out Calhoun was sticking his hand up the company bum. Tommy puts a mark out on Calhoun's ass. Some wise ass looking to make a name for himself gives Calhoun a lead enema and ends up collecting a paycheck big enough to put him ass deep in cash up to his genitals. That's a lot of anal and penis references for one sentence, Butch. Thanks. It's not my record, but I'm pretty proud of it. So what do you think of old Butchie's theory? Pretty smart, huh? It doesn't make any sense. I was Calhoun's ticket out. The only reason John could have had to try to kill us was trying to make amends with Tommy. If that was the case, why would Tommy kill John before John killed us? There was more to it than that. That's why I arranged a little dinner date with Debbie Hitler the other night. What the hell do you want, Du Maurier? The truth. John Calhoun was killed last week. Normally that's the kind of thing that would upset me. But since he was trying to kill me, I figure I'll get over it. Why don't you just lay your cards on the table? John came to me looking for a way out. I set up the deal, then suddenly he backs out. I saw how scared he was of Tommy. There is no way he would have reconsidered. I haven't got the slightest idea what you're talking about. And those are my exact words to her. But I don't think she bought it. Will your friend be rejoining you? No. She decided to call it a night. Scotch and soda, right, mister? I never forget a drink or a face. Make it a double. I thought you said you'd never been here before. Eh, I get that all the time. I got a face that just screams, scotch and soda. <laughs> hey, why don't you finish your story, huh? So I told her I didn't have a clue what she was talking about. But I could tell she didn't buy it. You're such a liar, Hitler. I know all about your deal with Calhoun. I know you were using his daughter as leverage. I know you had his wife killed. And I know you and Tommy had your claws into his daughter, Margot. The fix was in on the reading drive. It's a long walk between suspicion and proof. Thought you said you gave the photos to Debbie. I had more than one copy of the photographs made. That's real good thinking. That way, if Debbie keeps them, you've still got a copy for yourself. That's what we dicks like to call having a little backup. Thanks for pointing that out, Butch. I'd be lost without you. You and every other dame I ever met. These chairs are pretty tippy. So, you have some photos with me and Tommy talking to John Calhoun. Big deal. Well, that's just the tip of the iceberg. We've been on to you for months. I've got a videotaped confession from the guy you used to fix the dance competition. I know you fixed the reading drive. And I know you had something to do with Vance Van Vandervan's untimely demise. Do you have any idea what Tommy's going to do to you when he finds out? I'll kill her. That's what I told her. She didn't seem very scared. How did things go with that idiot Patterson? It's been three days since our meeting. I should have heard from him by now. Do you really think he'd set her up like that? Listen, we're talking about a premature ejaculating, kleptomaniac, alcoholic private detective who works out of a condemned building and who's been arrested for public indecency at a petting zoo 22 times. He's not exactly long on moral fiber. Well, how do we know he didn't just go straight to Blanche with the offer? She would have tipped her hand during your first meeting with her. Besides, I saw the look in his eyes when I started throwing the numbers around. Fifty grand, huh? I don't know, me and Blanche go way back. I'm a lot of things, Tommy. But an accessory to murder, I don't know. I kind of made myself a promise, never again. Seventy-five thousand? You know where she lives, right? Because I do. He should have called by now. Here's your drink. Oh, and before I forget, your daughter forgot her credit card here the other night. Should I give it to you, or should I phone Jasmine and have her come by and pick it up? Tommy's having an affair. My heart bleeds for you. 
I'll help you. But I want something in return. The last time I put my faith in you, it almost got me killed. Why should I believe you now? Those are the documents Debbie gave me. The ones that supposedly implicated Tommy. I thought you said Vance Van Vandervan was behind it all. Then you were telling me it was John Calhoun's kid, Margo. Now you're telling me it was Tommy and Debbie. Why the hell don't you make up your mind? This is the last time, Butch. Tommy and Debbie were in it together to a point, but they were both pursuing separate interests. Tommy had the fix in on the reading drive, and he was using Margot to get at John. She's ruthless. I mean, I enjoy killing and extortion as much as the next girl, but this Margot kid is a real piece of work. Tommy and I figured we could scare her into giving up where her dad was hiding. And she did? You're not getting it. Tommy went to the school to try and intimidate her. Said he would call the principal, turn her in for cheating on all the reading drives. The kid never so much as batted an eyelash. Instead, she throws a whole new deal on the table. Says she'll tell us where her dad is hiding for 50% of the contract money that Tommy has out on his head. Her own father? Boy, kids today. So if Calhoun ain't her dad, who the hell is? Debbie pretended she didn't know, but I think she was lying. Or at least holding back until she had more definite proof. So that's why she killed John. Debbie didn't kill John. Tommy had already killed John's wife. So John was the only one left who could have told her who Margot's real parents were. Unless John told her before Debbie killed him. That way, she gets rid of the only witness that links her back to the investigation of Margot's paternity. She ties up all the loose ends and walks away scot-free. I never thought of that. Don't be too hard on yourself, baby. It ain't your fault God didn't make you born with as much smartness as good old Butchie here. Wait a second. That doesn't make any sense. Why would Debbie care about figuring out who Margot's real parents were? Unless she was using that information to blackmail John into something else. I bet that's what she used to get him to try and kill you and me. Possibly. Except if that was the case, it would rule her out as the killer. Why? Because. She wouldn't spend so much time trying to con him to kill us, then turn around and kill him before he could do it. Unless... She's dyslexic. Adopted or not, can you imagine setting up your own father for murder? So Margo was playing both sides of the fence. She had a deal with Tommy. Her father's life for another reading drive victory. Only Tommy figured that he'd double-cross Margo. Once we had John, we knew we could convince him to kill you and... Butch, to pay off his debt. It's not like Tommy to leave a loose end like John hanging around. Oh, we were going to kill him too and just tie everything up into a nice, neat little package. Except for Margot. I thought Margot was the one behind the letters. Why would Margot be sending threatening letters to Tommy? Tommy said it was because she was trying to blackmail him into coughing up more money to turn over her father. That would make sense. It would, but it's not what happened. It's Tommy's affair with Jasmine. She was the one sending the letters. So Jasmine was pretending to be Margot and blackmailing Tommy. Hoping that Tommy would get fed up doling out the cash and have Margot eliminated. I still don't get it. Imagine how I feel. But why would Jasmine want Margot dead? If it was leverage she wanted, she could have just threatened Tommy with exposing the affair to you. Jasmine plays for keeps. And she's greedy. She could have done it that way and settled for a big payday, but instead, she saw a brighter light at the end of the tunnel. 
We didn't order these. This is really starting to piss me off. He's not a very good waiter. Jasmine is the one blackmailing me. And Margot is my daughter. Jasmine's in mine. I really wish you'd stop doing that. Finish the story, Tommy. It was an unplanned pregnancy. We both felt adoption would be the best solution. Things went smoothly for almost a decade. And then Jasmine shows up to our weekly rendezvous at the billiard hall. I was already naked and had the balls racked. Snooker or nine ball? Nine ball. All we ever played was nine ball. Honest. Anyway, Jasmine shows up and tells me this Margot kid, our daughter, has tracked her down. The kid had done her homework. She knew all about the affair and threatened to tell Van Vandervan and you unless we helped her fix the reading drive. How did it go from there to murder? Margot didn't know that Vance suspected Jasmine of having an affair and had hired someone to tailor. That someone uncovered Margot's scam and told Vance. Vance confronted Margot, and then Vance and Margot confronted Jasmine. And that's when the three of them hatched the plan to stage Vance's death and blackmail me. It's a confusing story. So you can see why I'm not terribly concerned about double-crossing Tommy. Provided the information you just gave me is true. You'll just have to take my word for it. We didn't order any spaghetti. Every time I come here, you get my order confused. You're not a very good waiter. I suppose you're all wondering why I called this little meeting. I'm a simple man. I never went to college. I'll never be rich or famous. And what's more, I don't want to be. All I've ever wanted out of life was to be left alone. Allowed to do my job and return home every night to my parrots and fish. You people, with your fighting and clandestine meetings. All the backstabbing you people have made that impossible for the past two weeks. So I'm asking you, not just as a waiter, but as another human being who shares this earth with you. Would you please all sit down together and conduct an open and fair dialogue that respects everybody's opinions and try to come to some resolution that settles all your differences. I'm sorry this meeting had to be so secretive and clandestine. It's just that. Long time no see, prick. I'll have 15 gin and tonics. Chop, chop, underpants. Sorry I'm late. I haven't had time to steal a watch that works yet. Mr. Patterson, I would like a moment of your time alone. You and every other homosexual in this world. That's not what I meant, and I am not a homosexual. Well, then maybe you should quit coming on to me. Let's cut the crap and show our hands. I'll start. I'm gonna put you away for the rest of your life, Rubella. I've got enough evidence to do it. You've got nothing. She's got everything. You bitch. <laughs> There's one thing I won't tolerate, and that's infidelity. What about you banging all them other guys down at the S&M club? She was cheating on you, too. Be quiet, Butch. You don't understand what's going on here, so just stay out of it. Butch is planning on killing you. I paid him 75000 to do it. Back off, sweet pants. Old Butchie was playing both sides of the fence. I took the cash. Then I made a side deal with Debbie to screw you and send you away for the rest of your life. Keep your mouth shut, Patterson. Oh. Would everyone just calm down and stop punching each other? It's not going to change or solve anything. Thanks, prick. So where do we go from here? It's over, Tommy. Us, your criminal empire, everything. I'm not going alone. I've videotaped and recorded everything. I got phone taps, the works. 
I got you on camera helping me set up Patterson and Blanche. I got Patterson on camera agreeing to kill Blanche. I got phone taps of Margot talking to Calhoun. Jasmine and Calhoun setting up the blackmail. Everything. If I go to jail, I'm taking everyone with me. The only one who walks is Blanche. And in order to do that, she has to send her friend Butch Patterson away for the rest of his life. <laughs> so it would appear, Miss Du Maurier, that the ball is in your court. How about I return that serve? Van Vandervan. Van Vandervan. Van Vandervan? Who's this prick? Van Vandervan. Vance Van Vandervan? It's the stupidest name I ever heard. You made that up, didn't you? I, I thought, thought you, you were, were dead. dead. You're going to wish I was when you learn why I faked it all. Can hardly hear you, prick. Why don't you have a drink of water and loosen your belt? You all think you're so smart. Let me guess. You figure Jasmine and Margot cut a deal to blackmail Tommy. In the process, they set up Margot's adopted father, John, to take the fall. That left only two people to lay claim to Tommy's fortune. Jasmine and Margot, the mother and biological child. Then suddenly Jasmine disappears, leaving only Margot. Oh, you figure Tommy had her taken care of to solve his little problem. After all, since it was a clandestine affair, it would have been Jasmine's word against Tommy's over the paternity of the child. I figured Blanche and Patterson were behind it, trying to put the heat on me. Then I found out Debbie and Blanche were working a side job. Serves you right for stepping out on me. Let me see if I've got this straight. You knew about the scam Jasmine and Calhoun were running. You wanted a cut of it, but you didn't want to share. So I clued Tommy in on it. And I let him know that Jasmine and I were going to stage my death. She never saw it coming. But why would Jasmine want to stage your death in order to blackmail Tommy? <laughs> Tommy didn't have anything to do with it at that point. I'd been involved in a panda smuggling operation that went wrong. I needed a way out. So we figured we'd kill two birds with one stone and collect the insurance money along the way. Well, now that I've got everyone here, I have a question. How tall do you figure you can be and still be a midget? Four foot two. See, I told you. Will you shut up and listen, Patterson? This is serious. Relax, pumpkin pants. Old Butchie's all over it. I want my money back, Patterson. Go to hell, prick. Why don't you finish your story, Vance? It still doesn't make any sense. It's simple. Margot, Jasmine, and John cut a deal to blackmail Tommy. Only Margot and Tommy had a side deal to set up John. While that was going on, Tommy, Jasmine, and I cut a deal to stage my death and kill you two. Only what I didn't realize was that Debbie was feeding you information so you could expose Tommy. Then Tommy had the brilliant idea that Patterson could be bought to set up Blanche and eliminate the problem. Only what Tommy didn't know was that Debbie knew about his affair with Jasmine. That's why she was willing to cut the side deal with Patterson to set up Tommy. Then Jasmine killed John to increase her share of the blackmail money. Only what she didn't count on was me knowing about it all along. So I set up a deal to have her killed. That way I could keep the blackmail money that was coming from Tommy, and I could keep the life insurance money that I'd get from my stage demise. Now the only thing I have to do is kill all of you, and I get off scot-free. Well, since you're going to kill us anyways, at least do me the favor of explaining one thing. I understand how it all worked up to a point. But there is no way you could have been at two places at the same time, which can only mean that you cut a deal with someone at this table to kill Jasmine. And I want to know who that someone is. It was... It was... Oh. Well, the whole thing was a setup right from the beginning. It was all carefully, meticulously, beautifully organized by... Van Vandervan? That's still the stupidest name I ever heard.
Van Vandervan. What about him? I want to know who poisoned him. He took the final piece of the puzzle to his grave. I spent the last few days digging through Vance's past to see if I could find a connection anywhere. But so far, nothing. Maybe it's best just to let the whole thing go. Sometimes it don't pay trying to fool the world into thinking you're something you're not. Take Vance Van Vandervan, for example. He tried to act all cool and suave, pretending to be some hip museum curator and art dealer. But he would have been better off sticking with his old job, instead of trying to climb the social ladder. This one's on me, baby. Tommy's money spends real nice. What was his old job? He was an apprentice in a garment factory. But in a few years, he would have been a tailor. Hey, Patterson. Yeah, everything went off without a hitch. Vance fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. So this evens the score for us, right? Perfect. Yeah, you have a nice life too, Jasmine.